It's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's been, been a while. It's been a while. That's what it is. Since Welcome I to Book Club for Movies, everybody, for the week. About movies. Oh. And it's been a while. February 13th, it's technically. The, it's the week of the of love. Is it? You're right. That day, yes. The Valentine's week. The only day you're allowed to love people. You can't love. No love. Well, no love. If it's not commercial love, what is it? I love commercials. Okay. Hey, do we do a show about commercials yet? It's the Have Super Bowl. Thought about that? <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's <laughs> never do that. It sounds dumb. Let's not, but let's say that we could fill an hour with commercial jingles that have been stuck in our heads since childhood. Can we at least get that? Are you kidding that? me? Okay. Yeah, I All think right. we just are. just want to make sure. Yeah. I'm not Excellent. going to immediately pull any of them out, though I definitely <laughs> want to work for an well, hour. I found a music prompt that you will not. Okay, I'm sorry. Didn't do there. great. Yeah. Still like On Book Club for Movies. Cash. More education is what I'm looking at when I get a degree. <laughs> I love the regional ones that come out, too. Salad. Dude, those are the best. I used yeah, to there's watching the, those. The, the, the lawyer ones, maybe the uh, the car for cash. Cars for cash. Cars for cash, ones sure. of, Is that okay? Anyway. My, favorite, oh. my favorite ones, though, okay. are the regional ones with sports players from those regions especially like Ooh. so the hockey ones are my favorite because i always watch the red wings so i it, the red wings would you know they get sponsors from like, local guys and so sure, 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 there yeah. was there's this russian guy named pavel datsuk that used to do this commercial for a guy uh, for a do, an eye doctor named dr romani and it was like it became <laughs> its own thing because he's so russian and he was like I trust my eyes to Dr. Romani. <laughs> you should too. <laughs> and it's just one of those amazing, yeah, no, it's great stuff. So not a, not a jingle, so to speak, but impactful. All this, like it, it's yeah. something that sticks with you all the same. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on Book Club for Movies, where typically, we, I, do I have to do the spiel? I thought about this. I've been reevaluating a few things during our time off. I always, I guess it's good for for newcomers to know, certainly mm -hmm. since we've been gone for some time. But consistency, it's consistency. The grand majority, especially when it comes to just podcasts and movie podcasts in general, do I need to say that we watch a movie and talk about it every week? Uh, do you need to? No. Should okay. you? Maybe not. Right. Are you going to? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And we come here and talk about it, and you can too. You can find us at podcast at bookclubformovies.com facebook and twitter of course as far as i can tell that's still operational to some degree yeah uh twitter is anyways it is uh, that was going to be the one i put on the bottom of the list actually oh no i'm still operational I still, goes i okay. tweet pretty regularly twitter operates worse than facebook is that what i almost said for a second yeah is there a hierarchy there that we can uh, I don't know, but the hierarchy of power is definitely going to change. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so sad. The hierarchy of power didn't change either. I, I really. mean, it did. It definitely oh, for did. A few, like I guess, the yeah. literal hierarchy absolutely changed. Oh, actually, that's also true. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't go. Sorry, Dwayne. The way you the marketing told us it was going to it's go. It's 16, 15 years of you doing as many steroids as possible to get as bulky <laughs> as possible, all to bring Henry Cavill back to watch all of it fall into flames. He flew oh, too man. close to the sun, and we all know what happens to rocks when they fly too close to the sun. <laughs> yes, no, it's a classic tale. Uh, and honestly, it's I feel bad about it. We joke. We joke about everything, but man, that's just kind of, you kind of look back, especially after everything the DC... You and, and the DC MCU has been through. Mm. Uh, it's mm. it's just a real. It's a, that was a it's a rough one. Sorry to everyone involved. Mm. Although the yeah, James Gunn stuff looks. Hey, super uh, hmm. super excited for that. We'll right. see we'll see what we get. It's going to be different, and I can go with it. So I guess if you haven't been able to tell so far, this is going to be more of a grab bag show. Grab than bag. Something we had planned, we had talked about, in fact, might still do, I guess we'll figure it out during this show, a show on Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. A Pinocchio! We might just end up talking about that Let's talk bit. about a Pinocchio! <laughs> <laughs> but this show we wanted mostly to be a, a, a refresher, a welcome back. Welcome back into the years! Back. Why are we, is this, did the Nintendo movie have another trailer? I, look... 
<laughs> I'm having a, a lot of personality issues today. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the elephant in the room first? Okay. I'll just say it. Are you ready? Marvel Snap. All right. Oh, is that one? I really had no idea where you were going with it. And boy, oh boy, it is the elephant in the room. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Zero hit points returns. Well, sure. how much of a grab bag do you really want this no, to no, be? No, no, no. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. So I downloaded Marvel Snap. I knew I wasn't going to for some time. I knew it was going to be great. I mean, I had been seeing the, the Penny Arcade guys tweet about it for some time because I think they did some art for, for it. That I, I still have no idea. Actually I haven't yet seen to it. See. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, but oh, maybe it was. Now I'm wondering if it was Midnight Suns. You've played Midnight Suns. Does it seem like there's an EPA stuff in there? No. no. Okay. All right. So uh, I knew it was going to be something. I knew it was also from the Hearthstone guys. So I kind of knew. I mean, Hearthstone maybe the same story. I kept my distance because I just knew I'd I'd go down some sort of rabbit hole. Here's yeah. the Marvel version. Great. Wor yeah. Worse. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for licensing it towards me. In fact. It's probably good that I didn't download it until the end of my trip, considering how the end of that trip to to Denver did go at, at the end. The, before that was fantastic. In fact, I'll tell you what, one of the hardest, it's always hard to come back from vacation. Yeah. This, last year, this year, hardest it's ever been to, to get back into the swing of things. I, things, I can't even say it. Yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, so, it's, it's taken us a full extra month plus right? <laughs> almost to, <laughs> to get back here for a variety of reasons, which we will all get into continuing with yes, your I'm story. Yes, I'm sure. Go. I'm sure. But, but yeah, it, so I downloaded Marvel Snap the, the morning of and was like, yeah, sure, this is going to be fun. Continued to play it uh, up until now, although, boy, it's been a roller coaster of sorts. And I feel like I ruined you on it because you were very, very having lots of fun with it. Yeah. And then I on the off chance mentioned that I was looking at the ranking system, which it's a, it's a zero to 100 thing. Yeah. And, and my problem was that out of the gate, it let me get to 89. So I right. was like, Oh, this, this might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. <laughs> it is not. Lie. Oh, geez. Like, yeah. Once they started scaling back the obvious bots that they were feeding me that whole time, it was just this, a huge plummet, a, a race to the bottom as it were. And it's been, ever since so i've had to kind of figure out what t type of playing i'm going to do with marvel snap since then because yeah, that yeah. it shouldn't like i've i'm on record as having said you should never worry about rank to like and i never have since like halo i remember caring about my rank in halo 2 online maybe halo 3 online actually because yep, that was the same right. type of thing where if you did worse you went down in rank right so you, there was this having to keep up issue to it which sucks keep, keep it up yeah anywho so you putts back to having fun with the game now that i've got some more cards out of it in fact i haven't even told you this but i just got but a ghost rider showed up in God, the store James, yeah still i i had to repin him oh wait i thought you got him after I you pinned him no i unpinned him because i was like <laughs> you know what I am just tired of this. I, I'm gonna. I gotta just let this cycle. It had been sitting there for so long. So I unpinned. So after him. to explain a little bit after after you've uh, got your collection level up a bit, which is after you've got a bunch of cards, a store opens up in the store, a store within the store, wherein you can buy cards that they show up, and there's a rotation that goes on. But you can pin it if you can't afford it, and then hopefully to buy it later. You had Ghost Rider pinned for uh, like a month. All, a uh, month. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was like the full month, and. Finally let him go, and then something else popped up in there, and I went, oh, you know, I don't have that, so I'll get that instead. And uh, and then... <laughs> Which it sounds like it was a good... I mean, purchase. it was fine. It was I wanted it, and I don't I don't even remember what it was. I was going to say, do you remember? It yeah, like, that's all right. It actually, you know what? It was Thor. It was Thor. That's what it oh, was. Oh, all right. I, I was just not getting... I could not get... Uh, I had Jane Foster, but I couldn't get regular Thor, and those two synergize, and I desperately oh. wanted that, and now I finally have it. Nice. Okay. And I, I, did, right. I also got the Scotty Young Thor, uh, uh, Jane Foster Thor, so... That's I haven't like even my... seen that. So yeah, yeah, the cards have variants too, and Matt's yeah. up on. I, I haven't got into the variants so much, but um, you have built a beautiful Scotty Young. Yeah, my little Scotty Young collection deck, <laughs> and yeah, collection. Uh, but uh, but yeah, the the uh, so that the the thing is like when it comes to the the rank and all that, especially, it's not that I care so much about the actual rank in terms of it mattering it's that you get certain rewards at certain levels yes and yeah. this i can't like right now i was 
I was doing real well the last couple of days, like like three days ago, I was doing pretty well and I had been climbing pretty regularly and I'd gotten up to about 48 and I'm back down to like, nice. four, I'm back down to 40 now. <laughs> yeah. That, well, that's been my, yeah. In fact, I haven't been able to break 50 this time around. You'll get there. It's, I, I swear uh, it's a thing that they, they, they fluctuate it as the month goes on or something. It's I'm, the more I play it and the more I see, cause we do have one, uh, his, his account's locked on Twitter, so I don't want to shout him out if he doesn't want to be shouted out. But th- there is a, a friend that we, or at least <laughs> you go back and forth with, but since we share the Twitter yeah. account, I, I have tried to respond a, a few times, but we're not friends yet, so I need to friend him so I can at least join the conversation maybe if that's viable. I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> it should be. After listening to some of this, I'm positive we're experiencing the same things. Their matchmaking is just such that, yeah, they'll feed you bots to keep you interested, it feels like, but they'll also match you up against decks that are exact counters to yours. I'm almost 100% positive. Uh, and they'll... Something about the way they just slam you back down after you make any progress. Like, it doesn't seem... I don't think they've quite found the balance but right. within 10 levels, maybe. Because, again, it sounds like you're saying, you know, 49 to 40 is about... Because that's been my experience, too. Like, within 10 levels, once you get up to... You break a, a tenth, like, it seems like there's some more room. Yeah. But it'll always slam you right back down. Yes. To, you, to where it, you came in. Yeah. It, yeah, you definitely need a little bit of luck. But it there's some, there's some frustration, too, where, like... It, so... I don't I don't mind how almost all of the 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 way it's it works out and that it, yeah it, it, is there a pay to win aspect I don't I yeah maybe I guess like hmm. you have to keep buying gold to but how do you like I don't know it's they've done a pretty good job of of making it not It's better than most yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. But but I think the thing that I'm running into is that they base a whole mess of this stuff off of your collection level so like your collection level, you're technically you're not supposed to be able to get cards from series four until you've collected all of series three. Like you Oh, is that you, how it goes? You, you're not oh, supposed I see. To, I just thought they were more rare. You can't even get them. No, you're not supposed to that's that, that's so that's part wow. of my issue is that like you can that's why they have the, the store. That's the point. That's really the point of that that token store is okay. for you to get some of those cards that are a level out of your range. My problem is I can't tell you though how many freaking people I'm coming across now that have Galactus or Thanos. Like I am I'm still not at the 3000 collection level. I haven't got all of series 3 yet. And the, why are you getting matched up against these people? Why right? am I like, getting that? Ma- yeah, like yeah. how how the hell are they pulling that? I mean, at that point, see that that's where the, maybe the pay to win comes into a point. They're buying so much uh, like they're spending so much money on gold to buy as much of the currents that like the, the level up currency as possible to right. just level their guys so that they're hitting their collection levels. But like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is, it's, there's some questionable stuff. Like, like it's funny when it's, when it happens, you know, Galactus cracks me up every time. Yeah, no, that, which is the other thing about this. That's like the ultimate thing about this game. Uh, which I have come back on a little bit. It gets a little less fun over time. But in the moment when I'm hating it all, you know, all of our texts are like, I hate this. It's the best. You know, like I'm having a ton of fun. This is the worst. It's it so sucks. bad. I it's, love it. <laughs> it's such a weird. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It is fun. Though. Like I'm having I am having fun. Like it, it, I think one of the the most enjoyable aspects of the game for me at this point is seeing the decks I'm losing to and going, how? Like, where? Okay, that's great. I just realized somebody somebody pulled out, uh, like, I, I ran into a couple of, of, of decks that had zero as, like, their base. And I never, because hmm. I'm like, why would you bother with that? And then I'm realizing, oh, you there are cards that, like, Ebony Maw, put him down. Yeah. One, red he, skull uh, okay yeah red skull exactly so you put zero down he they don't do anything they don't get that effect you can take it cancels can, the effect of the next card you play yeah daily if not every other day at the at the outside i see somebody use a card in a way that i'm like oh that's, or whoa yep. i had no idea like you know and part of that's because one of my favorite features and i've heard people don't enjoy this part of it but i love it to death 
is all of the different locations that they come up with. Yeah, there's some locations that I'm not as excited to see sometimes, but for the most part, like 99%, I love the the variety that they bring into the game and what it, they do with the cards that we, you already have and stuff like that. Yeah, it, It's what makes the game so much fun, I think, like overall. I yeah. think those locations are so necessary to it, you know? Yeah. And and Good I game. also you know I I actually really love the the fact that it's a limited game like you're only gonna get seven at most rounds right you it's six yeah. ninety ninety eight percent of the Quick, time in and out yeah yeah which somehow still doesn't seem to work like yeah no this game will be real quick don't worry thirty minutes later <laughs> almost over no I, I I'm waiting for well they finally added in the fast forward thing which I've had happen a couple times okay is that new all right I, I have yeah. seen that yes especially when I bust out the move deck which is this is where i'm at right so i have i have formulated a number of decks but the issue i was running into which you've kind of already talked about is that i i was having a hard time completing those decks really yeah like they they're not exactly viable as kind of these these uh it's not like an archetype gimmicky deck. decks but like yes like a, a themed deck yeah. uh, because i didn't have all the pieces to it so right. finally i did get ghost rider so that pretty much completed my discard deck and yeah. i also do you have he- do you have help do you have hella I do have Hella. I got her okay, a bit yeah. ago, but I couldn't use her because I had nothing to to go with her. Uh, but I yeah, mean, so I, that, I, that's part of it. I use her without Ghost Rider, but yeah, sure, I understand why. Well, I, yeah, I've used her without Ghost Rider for a good long time. Like my my discard deck wasn't that bad because I did actually. That's the thing about this month too is I finally went in for the season pass. You know, I paid the ten bucks. I like it. So I, Modok like, is fun, man. We're he's pulling. fun, but he wasn't at first, so I was just even more upset because I had paid money to play this thing I loved to hate. I'm 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 fine now because I also got Death, who kind of completed my my destroy deck mm-hmm. a little bit because I didn't have a finale in that deck at all. So the the thing you were hinting at, and the thing I say that it still does better than most, is that when the new cards come out, there's always this temptation to have them be OP in a way to drive sales, right? That that, that is the dirtiest thing uh, games like this can do. Yeah, is that they they want you to buy the new stuff because you're getting you. It's the game is nearly unplayable otherwise because you just keep losing you keep getting your butt handed to you so like i said i don't think they're that bad with that but it does feel like there is some of that going on so a little bit and they've definitely like i i think i think that okay so there there was a little bit of an uproar last month uh comma this month with zabu because so you you already know what the complaints with zabu i got the surfer side of that story apparently right right but the the issue silver surfer and, and and the the but the issue is that they put the card out and then a month later they nerf the hell out of it. Well, so everybody who bought that card right. kind of feels real bad about that, you know. Like and the, it wasn't even the, the, the surfer. Sorry, sorry, go so the surfer change I actually don't think is bad. Like the surfer change doesn't negate the value in that card. The Zabu change though, it negates the value of that card pretty hardcore like i don't see it anymore and even in my decks where i've had him i don't really use him that much it's i because the value isn't there there's something else that i can replace there at this point you know who the better choice is for 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 zabu is i'd rather put lockjaw there (laughs) like i'd rather have a i'd rather have a full card swap get a reveal and a full card swap than than great one point off of my four point cards well I mean, cool. So that allows me to play two four point cards on turn six. But how often? Like, yeah, I don't know. I have to. Yeah, I, no, I'm, I, I do know. not envy them their their job. They they're they have doing okay. A, a they're doing okay of sorts. Yes. <laughs> they also, they are doing okay. But man, yes, to to balance all of those together. To I did read their post when they came out with the nerf for Zabu and Surfer, and they also it's pretty darn explanatory like i I don't own zabu so i'm sure i was not prone to the anger but after reading it i'm like i get it like that's that's cool but also because they mentioned that they're like we're towing a line here we get it because you paid for this and this is why we did this and this is which kind of also gives you some recourse towards okay what can i do with him now which i don't know because i don't have him but yeah no it's a good game for as much as i hate it it's it's pretty good I will. I, I do want to mention because you mentioned Midnight Suns. I freaking love Midnight Suns. Oh, okay. Good. I love that game. I am having so much fun with it. And the thing that everybody like the biggest complaint about the game that I, I say everybody, the thing that that has I, the biggest uh, drawback for most people or the complaint is that the stuff at the Abbey where you go and you the relationship building stuff. I am just having a ball with it because 
the game is ostensibly, and I, I think I've mentioned this before, but it's that Mortal Kombat deception, man, when you were just running around and then finding the guys and meeting them. Okay, it's time to fight. Okay, I'm going to go run oh, around the, more uh, and go fight. Combat, conquest? conquest mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. And to a lesser extent, the crypt kind of too, right? Yeah. Maybe in the last few games. Yeah, I, I, but I, I love that stuff. Like, And I love this. I love having a a relationship builder. It's a dating sim. <laughs> that 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 is totally like that's and that's what that's dude i don't want to i don't want to deal with dating i don't know i do i kind of love and right now i'm struggling between do i want to date magic or do i want to date captain marvel because i like <laughs> both of them a lot <laughs> it's super fun though but when you get to the card aspect and the way it all ties in for me it's amazing it's so much fun cool. and i finally got to uh i've been going really slow with it and that the game allows you to kind of go at your own pace in terms of building the characters and the missions. So you have a main mission and then you always have like your side missions. So I've been doing lots of side missions. And then I finally did like the first three main missions. I'm like, Oh cool. Wolverine is in this game. I was wondering <laughs> when he showed up, he was on the cover. I know. Yeah. He's on all the key art. Yeah. He's super uh, fun to play it, too. I've, I've never seen any of the actual gameplay. I've heard about the Abbey stuff because yeah, it's number yeah. one. I've never heard anybody that's played it say they don't like it. Yeah, I know it didn't do well. Like it's it's kind of sad how I guess. I, yeah, I'm I gonna know. buy all the DLC for it because I I okay. freaking love this game so much. Uh, but I ha I don't know anything about the actual gameplay. Is it a card battler? I know there's cards involved. Is that what we're looking at? So really? it's not, it kind of yes, but no. So like I mean, okay. you're you're never playing against other people, but you are you are developing a card a deck per character. Um, and you don't have to like the, the, the game actually allows you to focus on characters and it will maintain a level for the others that you don't like, I don't care about Iron Man. I don't use him for anything, but he's still level nine. Cause everybody else is like level 10 right now. Whatever. Wow. This so, is like, it's kind of the same thing they did for snap actually. Like yeah, Iron Man's in there is like a really strong card right off the bat that you kind of over time don't use as much anymore. Oh, I didn't use him from the beginning, but, uh, but <laughs> regardless it's uh yeah. So, so as you're playing, as you go through, like you'll, you'll do some stuff in the Abbey, uh, that will allow you to, um, build up your deck and then as you play there will be missions that allow you to get cards and stuff and so as you you'll go on you can upgrade your cards by building uh duplicates of the cards on your own you don't have to collect them you just have to collect the like the currency and you can build the currency and you have to go out to get but but when you get to the actual like the gameplay itself you have uh, a deck of i think it's i think it's nine cards it might be more, but I think it's nine. You have a nine card deck for each character. Each round you play is oh, okay. you get to choose three characters. The entire game is based around a character you create, uh, which I normally oh. hate, but yeah. I actually, <laughs> but I actually really like this works. I, I, I just let myself go into it because it feels like, okay, yeah, we're, we're introducing a new comic character and I get to kind of design my little character and, what have you and so all right well if they found cool. out a way to make that work yeah all more power too because yeah that's the part that's usually like hey you get to interact with all of the characters you love but darned if you're not going to be generic I, man no, and, and for, there know. is that they, they, they make the genericism work by by you basically being a, a thousand year old dead guy that's been resurrected to help destroy all right so it like so you get the little bit like i do not understand everything and i have this is my the the best thing is you have a dog it's like a devil dog and the dog's name is charlie and they people <laughs> people were making fun of this so badly that they finally patched in more lines because you would pet the dog and if you pet the dog enough times consistently you'll just start getting um rewards for it like you'll get upgrades you get money whatever <laughs> but fantastic. but when you do it he would always like he had like two lines he would be like hello charlie and then the other one that just got and i love it i love it so much he goes who is a good girl it is my charlie girl <laughs> and everything he says is very very enunciated he does not have a lot of but it's super fun it's cool how i i actually really like how the character works and you do get a lot of options for changing them up and, and their costume huh. and what they look like out of the costume. Uh, same thing with all of the other characters. There's lots of stuff that you just randomly will collect to change the colors on their costumes or add things to them. 
And then, Crazy. yeah. So when you get into the game, you you have you choose one of three characters, or you choose three characters because you're going to play all of them. Their decks essentially get uh, munged up, and you get dealt a hand of random cards that will be you know you might not get a card for every character on your first pull. Sure. Uh, you get X amount of uh, redraws, so you can choose like two cards to redraw. Some cards you get a bonus for that. Um, you get a certain amount of card plays. Some card plays can be refunded with certain card types. So if you have a, uh, like th they'll litter the battlefield with a bunch of like weak character, or, like weak bad guys. And if you can knock one out with one card, it'll just refund that card play. Um, huh. And you get a couple. Uh, I mean, yeah, we had, it, sorry, but it, yeah, it, whatever. This is all it's, very interesting. It's fun. I do, it's yes, fun. I do enjoy here, it. Let, let, and... Here, let 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 me do this. Uh, yeah, it's a card game, and when you collect the cards, you play them. It's fun. <laughs> we should talk about movies. Is that? Did I just witness the fast forward feature? Yeah. Uh, for <laughs> the Hello. podcast, we did it. No, that 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 was your quick uh, thirty <laughs> on. Uh, uh, video games there. 30 your, your on Secret 30. zero hit points, everybody. Yeah. Here, let me talk to you about a movie. I want to talk to you about a movie. This this whole show is just going to be a best of whatever, not best of a. a yeah, rest no, of it's going to be a real a grab bag. Uh, how, how do you want to do it though? Before we go, because I have, I tell you how much I, I. In fact, I have no problem telling you what the movies are if you want to choose them, or do you want me to surprise you? But I have one, two, three, four, five six seven that i can talk about including pinocchio if we're going to toss it out there or do we maybe first question do we still want to do a show on pinocchio or is that kind of let's just have a quick talk on pinocchio all right okay all right did you so, like yeah. it uh, <laughs> right now even yes yes i did in fact quite a quite a bit although i will say it's good that we're not doing a show on it because i don't know how much of it stuck with me i have the notes here but man i didn't it isn't a movie that i've continued to think about Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. So, did like it quite a bit. It's flat out gorgeous in the way that you think it would be. You know, a, a claymation or um, I don't know if it's strictly speaking claymation, but stop motion Guillermo del Toro designed movie. It's absolutely breathtaking, kind of at every moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I nothing, I guess, but nothing. <laughs> I, I I would legitimately. I, I'm 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 so glad because I agree with you. I, I think the movie was beautiful. I actually really loved it. I, I thought the uh, the voice acting was great. Uh, you yep. know, um, Kate I Blanchett. Now who was? Yeah, Kate, okay, right. Kate, yes. Kate Blanchett being the the uh, the 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 star of the film. But but yeah, like uh, beyond that, it, it was. If anybody were to say, "Hey, what's your favorite version of Pinocchio?" I would definitely say this sure. is it easily. Yes, although like, I haven't seen. Have you seen any of the other newer ish ones? How many? I am never going to watch Three. the the live action whatever they it's did with it. Disney, with Tom right? Hanks. They just live action. Yeah, the, I'm not the, gonna. Okay. Like, I did not rewatch the cartoon yeah. either after we spoke because I had thought about doing that, but yeah. But I'm I, guessing this is this is the beginning of of Disney falling into public domain to some extent. I'm I'm guessing that's what's happening here. With I, well, I'm hoping that's what's happening here, rather I than mean, they Pinocchio change the laws again. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they didn't own like, most of that stuff. They didn't own they they you know. Oh, it's, is a, that? it's a Grimm's fairy tale, or somebody else wrote it. I mean, Pinocchio is a book. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, I did. Me, I, I did, skim I, my notes. Yeah, I, you, I will me... say I love the uh, the aesthetic to it also, and the fact that they. I I don't know anything about the original story. I the only version of Pinocchio that is in my head is the Disney one from right. You know, I'm guessing there's actually a cricket in there because they went with. I was kind of surprised to see a cricket again in this. I was like, oh, that must be like not a, a Disney like Jiminy Cricket must not be. But he's not Jiminy it, Cricket. I love he's that not, he's not. But Jiminy it, Cricket. it must not be a full on Disney also. Uh, creation there you and mcgregor man there were like i i will say the movie did get me to tear up a few times and part of it was just the 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 earnest and sincerity the uh earnestness and sincerity that that mcgregor has as cricket when he's telling the story um but yeah. i actually really love the setting too putting it in uh world war ii italy like yeah. fascist italy like the, i mean so much going on there with that story and how that fits into pinocchio and what pinocchio is and geppetto and all of that stuff it was great i love that yeah the father-son stuff which they do they obviously do go hard on um uh, <laughs> geppetto having lost his daughter son is that right it was son? a son lost a son okay yeah so yeah. created kind of a new one but then there it is what is the 
it, it's very kind of uh, Coraline or to a lesser extent Corpse Bride ish, you know, where there's this kind of off kilter aspect of the whole thing. I think I'm just going to those two because they're also stop motion, but maybe the most off kilter thing that I'm even just now remembering now that I read the the notes that I took on it is the music. It is so strange the way the music is used because it's yeah. not a musical. It's not right. a, like in no way would I describe this movie as a musical. But it has musical uh, but it's interludes. Coming from, like, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it, yeah. Or it has it, musical like, interludes. even half, like the, I, at some point, I feel like the scene cuts in the middle of the song. It's kind of like here, and they're not horrible songs either. It's like I would probably listen to this if there was a full version somehow. Yeah, but there's but they, no yeah, such they, thing they, as they, a Hollywood ending, so. <laughs> I would listen to that one. I have listened to that one uh, numerous times. Uh, but it's it's it struck me. I think because I think it because they are aware of what other Pinocchio other people might be thinking of when they watch this thing. So I think they're toying with the I mean, toying with a lot of different nice. things, and the music ends up being one of it. Uh, but other than that, it is a lot just all together. It is. The fascism, uh, there's some religion stuff in there, father and son stuff we talked about, the war, like there's a, they're dealing with a ton of things, almost, almost maybe too many, you know, they, they work it out, but yeah. it's all in a way that maybe anything but the father son dynamic doesn't receive as much attention, you know, like everything I, else. I, I, I think that the, the, uh, the funny the, so the funny thing about this movie is that it, it, you could call it uh, Pinocchio and the like the 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 reclamation of Spazzatura because I feel like the movie once <laughs> Spazzatura is is introduced the movie so strongly becomes about those like Spazzatura almost being another version of being attached to somebody that they shouldn't necessarily be attached to or all that, you know, the puppetry there. Yeah. It's so incredible. It's so good. And, and admittedly, I kind of love how much Kate Blanchett was like, Hey, you know, I worked with you and now I love you and now I'll do anything. And he's like, I don't have anything for you, but the monkey. And she goes, okay, I'll do the monkey. <laughs> like that's what it was according to both of them. And I'm going to go with that story because I think it's just too delightful. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. No, fantastic. I, which either one of us would do the same. So yeah, I'll be an actual monkey. I, yeah, just, I, I just am. Tell me what to do. Yeah. I don't care. Uh, I also have a note here that says seagull LOL in capitals. That sounds I funny. I don't, yeah, it does. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I, I like it. I think it's good. <laughs> uh, is it the, mine, mine, mine? No, that's definitely Finding Nemo, I, I Find, think. Finding Nemo's. Uh, but yeah, that's um, all of my notes here say that it was a great film and, and I, that I highly recommend it. I do also. Uh, did you happen to watch m 3 Gin? No, I didn't. Uh, but you wanted to do a show on that. I that mean, another... I, yeah, but I, you know, it's we've been there. I don't know how long. Yeah, that was before you, you had want... seen it, but... Yeah, and now I've seen it, and I still want to do a show on it just because I want to rewatch it. <laughs> okay, so that good? Yeah, no, I'm totally There's an fine. unrated I, version coming out, so I've got to I got to check that out. Oh, isn't there always? I hope so. I can't wait. I I have to admit, so like it's one of those movies that on in every respect knows what it is, <laughs> knows what yeah. it wants to be. I would hope so. Nails yeah. it, and then on top of that, makes sure that you have enough time to. Get some popcorn because there's going to be a moment or two where you go Gah! and you're going to spill your popcorn. And it's great. It's so much fun. It's like it's one of those movies, though, that that uh, um, your kid's going to love. E Evelyn's going to love this movie. All right. And yeah, I didn't. You sent me the trailer probably when it got announced and I didn't watch it because I don't like never knowing. ignore things yeah. I send you or I, I will kill you. Uh, but then you said you want to see it in, in the theater. So I was like, OK, yeah, we're going to do this. And, and I looked up that it was then. It's like a, a Chucky like. Would you? Is that my? I, sure. Okay. It's it's going to be the the universal comparison. It's different in all of the updated ways a Chucky of today could be, and it's real good for it. Also, most Excellent. not the most novel thing. I could not figure out who the lead was in the movie until I heard her on Comedy Bang Bang. And they mentioned that she was the girlfriend in Get Out. 
Oh, that's oh, yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. It's Allison yeah. Williams. Okay, got it. So that was great. All right. Yeah. So yeah. look forward to that. Uh, in fact, I've got a few questions here about if these will be a show or not. So if I if I say a movie and you're like show, then just just let me know, and then the viewers will know what they have to look forward to for all right, all right. 2023. All right. Uh, I've got I've got I've got two more that are. <laughs> And then one more that's... Show? Wait, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I really want to tell you about it. Did I... How much did I talk about... Because also you can tell me... You can just you can just uh, nix some of these and, and they'll turn into uh, BCFM by myself later on. <laughs> I just realized uh, something also. Sorry. I oh. just realized... I forgot to... I was going to talk about this at the top of the show. Oh. <sighs> the whole reason why I have not done anything really much for the past month oh. and have not been available and all of that and why things may be different in a for a little while and i totally spaced on that hey no no time like the the present or you can save it as the the finale i don't i don't care it's your you're the master of of this domain maybe, maybe you can figure out how to cut this in real quick dot com i think i already did okay great uh so <laughs> <laughs> we're moving to wisconsin and we've been in the process of... We are! Yay! We're becoming Wisconsin Mound. I'm going to let that down it down at cheese. So we're <laughs> we're on the... Uh, we've been we've been working on getting home prepared and, and getting everything going. And that's finally kind of coming to fruition. And so for the next... Uh, for actually the past month and a half, so the beginning of December... Beginning of January through most of march we're going to be doing lots of stuff involving moving so my availability right. and stuff is going to be fluctuation which if it wasn't already since since you started your new job in fact i feel like i got out of there just in time as much as i would have liked to have stayed until it became uh inappropriate yeah would have been uh, good though yes it seemed like I don't know how you have time to do any this right now, actually, if I'm being honest. So thankfully, uh, Beth is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, but you're not here. Recording, playing video games. So we'll take advantage of that. Yeah, skirting responsibility. Uh, but yeah, don't I mean So I just want you to be we'll, we'll get I'm gonna get back to yes. it. It's gonna happen. I I'm I apologize. It, it's I have a lot on my plate right now, and as as much as I want this to be the main focus, I unfortunately also have to make money that pays for things like the yes. house. That unfortunately isn't that the thing, right? Yeah, it's. I mean, ideally someday, but right which now. you closed on, right? The house is done. You, house you, you is bought. Done. A, you own two houses right now. If I'm, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm desperate to get out from underneath one. <laughs> oh. Hey, you see that mountain over there? That's called the Rocky Mountains. My debt is bigger than that. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So no, no worries. Obviously, on my end, uh, this is not right. nothing. Obviously, because we have patrons that we are and do love. Yes, being absolutely. beholden to. That's what that's what all of this is about. So, be patient, please. Also, no, I shouldn't even say this, but no hate if you got to scale back or, or you know take some time out. If we're not producing enough for you, it's it's not we're like you're the boss here. You you I've been fired so many times. It, it's I understand. And when Ryan so, says no hate, he means no, comma, space, hate. Hate. Yes. <laughs> it's like you sound no, like No, money down. Uh, <laughs> the, the newer seasons of Arrested Development, controversial to say the least, but there is a bit in there where somebody tells, Jessica Walters tells the, the mother, uh, Lucille, one, uh, <laughs> tells her the whole hurt people hurt people you know like yeah and, and she takes it instead of taking it as oh hurt people hurt people she takes it as somebody commanding her twice to <laughs> hurt people hurt people, hurt hurt people. people. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that reminded me of but this isn't tvvp so i'll tell you what this is what i'm gonna do okay matt me- if you ever want to take advantage of this because you, you have movies you are largely in, in in charge of the the streaming operations and whatnot mm. i can set up something simple here that that if it makes it easier for you to just sit down and talk and leave instead of set everything up and sit down and take everything down and leave i am more than willing to do that if that makes it easier that but, is if you can do it i'll do it right. and just generally speaking for the patron at home uh, we appreciate the patience and yes We'll get back to you quickly. There, there hasn't been nothing, 
Uh, there is a, a by myself up there for M- Moonfall that I did. <laughs> it was good. It's good. Uh, I the, wanna... the by myself or Moonfall? No, it, the by yourself. I'm, I'm not going to okay, watch fine. Moonfall. Come on. <laughs> Have, did you, yeah, did you ever watch Moonfall? No, it's still downloaded. No, okay. I still have it. I want to watch it. I'll get there. I mean. I need to be in yeah. a situation. You, you do for Moonfall. <laughs> That's if, if there's a takeaway. So, yeah. There, there are so up. many Gerard Butler movies that I need to watch. Uh, I can't uh, put Moonfall. I don't even remember if he's in that. Uh, no, I, I, I can't. That's that. what I'm saying is I can't put Moonfall above that. I've got so ah, many. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. Yes. That's, mm. it, strangely enough, Patrick Wilson is in it. And I didn't mention that or Do you love Patrick how it Wilson? was a saving grace. Yeah, as mm. always. So it's whatever by myself. All right. Uh so yeah, here's 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 a fun. Do you want the whole list of movies? Do hey, you want me to surprise you? I want you to go crazy, go surprise you, go surprise you, okay. giving I'm me. I'm gonna lists. go absolutely insane. Then did I talk about John Q all that much when no. I watched it? I could have sworn I mentioned that I had watched it and would talk about it, and I think I didn't. I feel like you did, but I don't remember you talking about it. Great, this is even better. Then I watched John Q. Have you watched John Q? I How have not. Oh, oh, really? Never. I don't think so. Oh wow, interesting. Okay, so check is this out. Is it Denzel one? It is Denzel, and it's yeah, kind of quintessential could... Denzel. I didn't see this uh, one. It, I don't think. Yeah, it's directed by Nick Cassavetes, who yes, son of John. John, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I feel like you hear about often, but a woman under the influence is the one I have had queued up. I guess he also directed some Columbo, though. While I'm at it, I mean, speaking of Columbo, Say, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the board game we played while I was in Denver. Amazing. So much fun. We'll get it's, to that. It was so fun that I'm considering because I have on, on my other YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> I love your board games. Games that we play. I'm really considering like uh, thrift store shopping to to bring out the because though we played that the Columbo, which is this weird, just out of nowhere one off like throwaway board games that were probably barely popular for as long as the series was popular. We did that, and we did Flash Gordon. Just these really, and they're all variations on some other game. Like the Columbo was like this really twisted Clue, maybe. And like 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 a really easy version of Clue, with, yeah, with yeah. also with like a memory. It was Clue and memory, right? Yes, it was this weird, but still pretty Super darn fun. fun actually, and really interesting. Liked it, yeah. From like yeah, but we also played the the Flash Gordon was just a, a weird Parcheesi. So yeah, I'm I'm really considering uh, making some videos for. But anyway, anyways, um, those both very fun and uh, have nothing to do with Nick or John Casavetes. Who directed John Q right before he directed a movie called The Notebook? Did you know? <laughs> have you heard of <laughs> The Notebook? Uh, John Q. John Q feels like a B movie. It probably might actually still be a B movie. And I think I do think this is better than that might sound. Uh, better than than most B movies. Uh, it's doing at least three things at once and doing a pretty decent job at all of them. It is an okay takedown and all maybe surface level ish takedown of the system of healthcare, stuff like that. Oh, by the way, for, for people who don't know you included, I guess, uh, John Q Denzel Washington plays a person who uh, tries to procure a heart transplant for his son by taking an emergency room hostage. And then eventually this isn't really a spoiler because it does kind of build to this. Although I won't tell you if he does go through with it or not up to him t- possibly taking his own life to provide the heart. In the so it's, it's kind of that it's, it's like a, a modern day dog day, you know? Sure. It, sure. Sure. Not as good. And, and certainly more, I mean, you're like, you're, right. <laughs> you're, uh, you're uphill battles with right. things like that. The obvious but but it's a good comparison to understand the concept it is it's yeah, totally yeah. that because he takes the the emergency room hostage it's full of these characters which is, is probably the other thing it does it has all of these actors that you know uh, eddie griffin plays eddie griffin <laughs> essentially i mean always uh, ray liotta is out there playing the police chief who's putting some pressure on the negotiator played by robert duvall oh uh, yeah, that's okay. And, uh, All right. Y- you always hate to say it, but James Woods in uh, a weaselly role that he, of course, just knocks out of the park. Yeah, yeah, he's the worst. But yes, and the big dude from Unstoppable, which is selling him short because you know him from any other amount of of other movies, quite possibly even also Mall Rats, wherein he cannot see the magic eye poster. Yeah, Ethan, 
uh, Supli. 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 Su- Ethan Gosh, Supli. I looked at YouTube, so I knew how to do it. Supli. Ethan Supli. Yes. Who, by the way, is no longer the fat dude from all those movies no, you saw. No, he's ripped. That dude is jacked. <laughs> like, not, like, unrecognizable yeah. now. It is, yeah, insane. Look him up. Uh, but it takes all these characters, kind of playing the characters that they do best, and it's a darn good drama as Denzel kind of becomes friends with them and they begin to support him in a way and they also have their own little journeys within that. It's not as even broad as as I'm probably making it sound. I think it's done really well. It's a little bit more Hollywood than, say, a a Dog Day Afternoon, obviously. Sure, yeah. But it's good. I, I like would it. highly recommend John Q. I think is maybe. Yeah, I'll check that out. I like yeah. I, I like all those actors, and I mean, you tell me you They'll tell me great. You, you tell me you got Denzel with Robert Duvall, and that's a that's a winner right, right there. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, and it's as good as it sounds. It, th- there's really some weird moments. They stick out like a sore thumb, I think, because the rest is so good. But you'll notice them. It's like it go it goes a little Hollywood. There's some weird needle drops kind of out of nowhere that don't make a whole lot of sense. But sure. Other than that, very. Excellent, I think. That All right. Be... I like it. I'm going to check that out, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. Uh, Look at us. Back in the swing. This is going great. So, so the, the other night, Beth put on a movie that I had never heard of. She was just like, I'm just putting on a movie. I said, okay, whatever. Uh, she went to Shudder and found a movie that she put on purely for the um, uh, uh, description. And the description was was essentially... Um, like, seniors in an aging tenant in an aging tenement building are being pushed out by a landlord and go on a bloodthirsty revenge. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so we're like, waiting for that. Info, we're like, yeah. okay, old people going on, 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 you know, chaotic revenge tour. I'm into it. So we turn this movie on and I got to tell you, you have to watch this. You have to watch this movie. It's called home bodies. Okay. Oh. This came out in the late seventies. It is. Oh wow! Okay, I is, thought this was going to be like a, an ironic. Oh uh, no! Oh uh, no! It is. Okay, but I th- like a modern day, you know, wouldn't this be silly? No. Not, yeah, oh, wow. Okay. This is this is like late seventies, early eighties, maybe. Uh, and it is a bunch of old people in a in an apartment building that don't want to leave that are being forced out by a developer who's working in the same area. And they, the movie starts off with this old lady and she is in the movie the whole time. This creepy old lady that's constantly just going "Ah," smiling. And (laughs) and they like this guy falls, falls off the top of the building uh, uh, that's being constructed uh, next to the building that they're in, which is going to eventually knock the building down. That's what they're trying to build, you know, over. So this, this, th- they're, they're trying to stop all this construction from happening, thinking that'll save the building. So the old people are basically sabotaging these construction workers. <laughs> and it is weird as hell, man. There's a okay. blind, there's a blind guy involved. <laughs> uh, there's there's a woman who never leaves her house and is like it's weird man and shut and get her revenge as well yeah i'm looking i did find it, it now on imdb and i can't blame you if it's using the same poster that i'm seeing here what it's year pretty, what year it's from 74 yeah that's it you have to check this out it is a delightful monstrosity of a film it's not <laughs> okay. it's not good but it's great in that the this is a premise that has so the PG m- by the way. <laughs> it, this this has so much the the premise has so much like to it that Beth and I were jokingly talking about how you know while she's gone this weekend I'm going to write up a proposal song for a oh this could version. be remade oh absolutely yeah do that yeah it needs to be a musical like I said like, I'm surprised like, this doesn't this isn't a a recent I mean there are there were a number of movies called Homebody when I was trying to search but. I have no idea if there are other ones, but this one, phenomenal. <laughs> oh no, you're thinking of Homeboy, starring Mickey Rourke. That's and it for Walken. From hey, what's up, my dude? Homeboys. <laughs> hey, blood. I mean, what's cracking? Sure, yeah, that's, we got to get the the hate mail back on. Colors. Later, so. 
I am a nightmare walking <laughs> psychopath talking. I'm me, happy that we went 54 minutes without a Christopher Walken impression now that we're Me back. and Ice T are best friends. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just a, a judgment night with Christopher Walken. And uh, so, Ice T. Ah, oh boy. Oh, you, okay, you went quicker than I did, so what if I choose another oh, one? I, uh, I can give you another one. No, no, I got, I got a quickie. I'll come okay, back Okay, okay, okay. We can volleyball this thing. All if, right, if, all right. We are but nothing if we don't volleyball, Matt. <laughs> and that's true. We're we're sports fans. Have you forgotten? Uh, how long has it been since you've seen Saving Private Ryan? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, if I'm being honest, probably since it came out on two tape VHS. Mm-hmm. It might have been about the same. For me, and po- quite possibly for the same reason. We've talked about this numerous times before. War movies do very, very little for us, even though I have several that I kind of want to watch, like the, the All Quiet. I want to watch all of the All what? Quiets to see what's going on. But it, yeah, it's just it's always an uphill. Maybe. Yeah, the, there are there are a handful of them that will always be like ones I can watch, like The Great Escape. I can like universally watch that. That movie sure. is just, but it's different. It's It's not... Because it's and, not and, the war movie, you know, it's it's the it's taking place during a war as opposed to the war being a major part of the movie. Yeah. And, and Saving Private Ryan, I think, is probably way up there when it comes to like, is this a, a propaganda piece? You know, like, how are we? Is it too romantic? You know, like right. in my head, it, it it was like to me, it was always that. And again, having not watched it in, in such a long time, I was like, oh, yeah, it's very. I never thought it was pro-war, but I always thought it was very patriotic in a way. You know, something that that I'm much more careful about my consumption. You know, nowadays, it's got some uh, mean parts, man. It does have, but like, it does one of yes. the one of the one of the most brutal bits. I mean, of out of any Still. war film I've seen in yeah. forever is that yeah. the bit with his mother where he's screaming for his mother and the the German is like pushing the knife in slow. Like that is a phenomenal piece of filmmaking right there. Which is why I want to say I think I was I was pretty far off. Like yes, the overall and it's got those bookends and all that stuff. But man, when it comes to movies that that are concerned with putting you in the middle of it, kind of yeah, warts and all. I mean, they're all quote unquote heroes, right. but it's not it's not pretty. Like and it starts with some absolute gore. You know, like that that is not a, a pretty movie really in any aspect which you can't say for a lot of tom hanks movies i feel like so yeah i mean and he's typically very pretty <laughs> he's an absolute god in the money pit <laughs> what are you going to do that body is insane <laughs> in the bonfire just, of the vanities now i just hear the laugh from the bathtub now that you mentioned it <laughs> <everything. laughs> that when i was a kid i would laugh at that for so long so hard <laughs> no regrets yeah, no, uh, on rewatched, and again, this just ends up sounding silly, but Saving Private Ryan is one of the best out there at this. Like, I, mm-hmm. I don't think it is. For for as saccharine as it feels like in my memory, it's it's not that. There is a lot of that, sure, and we obviously know where Spielberg stands on, on, on that. Uh, but <laughs> Do we I know? wouldn't say Do that we know how the, how the Jew stands on <laughs> World War II? <laughs> Where he, you know, we we figured out that the Jew didn't necessarily side. Next up, Hacksaw Ridge. What does the other side think? No. How did? Um, (laughs) So, I I really absolutely enjoyed. That's the uh, the movie where Andrew Garfield blames the Jews for World War One or whatever, right? I don't, I don't want know, to fight. I haven't seen it. He's like, I don't <laughs> want to fight. It's the Jews. <laughs> they did it. Um, I'm also Spider-Man. Fun Sorry. Th- throughout, uh, Saving Private Ryan is the people you forgot were in that movie. Vin Diesel? Name, name a person. Yeah, you did it. Vin yeah. Diesel's in it. <laughs> and not a small part either. Yeah, there are plenty of small parts. People that show up for literal Dude, seconds. that's like his big, that was his like major first role, I think. I forget, man. I I'm pretty. I am yeah, like. I he am was in there sure for a bit. He's in there. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. I know there are a bunch of people though that were. Ted Danson shows up for a hot second. Nathan Fillion kind of took me by surprise, actually. Uh, Paul Giamatti, I think I remembered. Uh, Brian Cranston also for half a second. And Dennis Farina. Oh R. man, R.I.P. Mr. Law and Order. What a what a yeah. that that guy. It, great. 
Get Shorty, it, he is just oh, so freaking funny <laughs> yeah. in Get Shorty. Yep. Uh, what a good guy. We are verging on, tell you what, speaking of what you have to look forward to for 2023, you got a heart oh. out? No. I, I, don't. Okay. I, thought, I thought you were saying We're both st- checking our, yeah, how long have <laughs> we been doing this? Years, Matt. <laughs> We've been doing it for years. Uh, I, I have it in my head that we can make movie Olympics. Is that what we call it? What do we call it, actually? <laughs> uh, but we call it movie Olympics, I think, didn't we? I like it. Let's go with it for now. We will... I think we can make it work. We did one episode. Go go look it up. We're in. We, it's, if you're familiar with Comedy Bang Bang, they sometimes do Song Olympics. And movie Olympics being the version where we just go on about movies, like which remind each other of different movies, which connect in, <laughs> in some way. I think we were a little too too broad. We need we need to be focused. So I've come up with some rules Ooh, to movie Olympics I'm that I think we can that. in state. Uh, but I feel like we're getting close to it, just with obviously how we normally talk. But to to be continued, to, I like to look that. forward to that. Yeah, we should do that. Let's do it. I'm in. I'm in. All right. Uh, but that's uh, Saving Private Ryan. Good movie, it turns out. All right. <laughs> l- l- let me let me give you an option. Do you want a new movie that's really good or a new movie that's really good? One of them Ooh. is really good. The other one is also really good, though. I got a fair amount of new ones, too. I, okay, I've got two new ones, and we could we have both seen them, and I think I know what one of the new ones are. So let's go with the new movie that's pretty good or mm. really good. Can't yeah, really so uh, you remember remember how I told you about those fellows – those that uh, Justin Benson and that Aaron Moorhead fellow, and then, oh. uh, we watched that film, the uh, uh, the Endless. Yes, and, uh, and we you did a ended, show on it. Even you, we did, and you ended up watching uh, their Synchronic. Synchronic, which I got halfway through, and I need to rewatch because I just got sidetracked. Uh, but oh, they okay. they released. I thought this was gonna be. I thought we were breaking. No, no, no. Okay. I I got, I was into it. I just got sidetracked, and I and I. Didn't pick up. I still up. have my notes. I could look them up right now. Uh, but maybe. Uh, they anyway. had a they have a new movie that has been released. It's now currently streaming on Hulu. I cannot recommend it enough. It is called Something in the Dirt. It is about the two gentlemen, the aforementioned Moorhead and Benson, of course, directing and starring in this film. Two guys uh, at a uh, run down, beat up huh. apartment building. And inside the building, there is something very odd happening. There's something that causes this uh, this glass thing to float and light comes through it. And then there's something in his closet and they're not real sure what's going on there. And uh, and, and it becomes this this really interesting thing where they're like, OK, we're going to document this weird thing. And the stress and cr- uh, of of not only trying to capture something like that, but doing that with somebody you don't know because you've just met them, but now you're bonded by this weird experience. Also, by being in this very weird, dumpy place, like you are the only two people here. So, super great movie, and has a blatant, blatant connection to the endless. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. It's got a. They could. There yeah, is a. They could do an an air uh, a Moorhead verse. No, what would it be? Oh, uh, it, they already it's... have all of the movies connect. Do they really? Yep. Interesting. Yes, they all connect in a variety in a various ways, but this one has an absolute direct connection to a moment in the Endless that made no sense in the Endless. And now they've been like, I have, I don't care. I do not care if this is a lost situation. We're like, no, we didn't know. We figured that we were like, oh, we can, <laughs> we can tie this together. I mean, I don't yeah. care because it's so perfect and it works so well that it just drives this this movie. And the and the movie is, it's so it's such a cool movie because it's being told as a documentary recreation of what happened to one of them. So it's a really weird way of of them. It's super cool. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm definitely more lukewarm on the duo than than you are. Yeah, I like but this a lot. Every single time I hear about their new thing or something they're doing, it sounds fascinating. <laughs> so I there, uh, this is it probably could, very little chance I'm not going to watch it. But because you just because you watch the endless, I would honestly say watch this to see if you remember how it connects. It, it's I mean it's blatant as hell. It's like 
you, okay. y- 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 if you don't remember it, then you just won't remember it. But, um, I mean, it's not impossible, but, but yeah, check it out. It's on Hulu. Uh, and I had no idea until the other night I watched it ser- like two days ago. <laughs> and is this comedic at all? Like some of it looks kind of comedic a little bit. It's definitely, it's definitely got humor or at least more it. so than like endless or, yes. or synchronic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Th- this definitely has like, I was, I was laughing throughout the movie it's not funny in the ha ha, you know, I'm trying to make you laugh, sure. so, but it's, it's fun- football comedy, or but it's definitely funny in that, like, like the way they react to each other and the, and the phrasing of things like it's, it's played for there's, you're meant to laugh. All right. It's good. And I will be ex- uh, interested to hear your final thoughts on Synchronic. Cause yes, I, even if I can't find my notes, I do remember what my overall was on that thing. Most everybody was pretty me- lukewarm is what I'm finding on it. <laughs> well, spoiler, uh, but yeah. <laughs> but I had, so- I had some specific reasons why. Like I, I can point to exactly what was like. Uh, so, Synchronic. Also to come. Yeah. Maybe for 2023. But definitely check out Something in the Dirt. Super. What, yeah. a, what a cool movie. It just, again, I just want those guys to always be making stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm on board with that for sure. Because again, everything always sounds fascinating. They're they're always making swings. I mean, I haven't even. They're, they, <laughs> I'm I, still looking forward to Moon Knight, and I don't. I know they were involved. I don't know exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, it's great. It, I mean, you would you wouldn't know. Like I, w- oh, when okay. their names popped up, I was like, oh, that's so cool. You would have no idea. There's they don't. Their style definitely comes through. I think with their storytelling as opposed to their directing. You know what okay. I mean? Like, I, I think that's, that's where their style fits is. Well, I mean, there's a reason they probably write and direct their own stuff. Mostly it looks like here. So yeah. Like, and I, and I just, I love that they are, yeah, they're, they're highbrow, you know, act for that reason. Yeah. It looks like these are the stars of the, of the, this, Yep, they were the stars of End- the Endless too, right? They are the stars yeah. of all their movies, except for oh, really? Synchronic. Okay. I think <laughs> I was going to say, were they? I know Anthony Mackie was Synchronic. I don't remember the what other. The... I'm sure that they were. No, the other dude it. is freaking. Uh, um, he might be the other main guy. Kulots. I don't uh, remember it again. <laughs> uh, pretty sure it's Jamie Hater. I think it's the guy that was in Devin Devin Star. Barb and Star? Barb and Star. That's right. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Barb anyway. and Star got a Vista Del Mar. That was funny. I have to watch that again. That was great. Yeah, good movie. Um, All right. So you gave me a new. Do you want a, a new? Yeah. I've got to choose between this uh, here. I finally watched Glass Onion, and I finally watched, uh, not finally, I guess. In fact, that there's a funny story behind it. Uh, Wakanda Forever. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. Any of those show movies both of them i really want to talk to you about actually for for different reasons but let's uh hit me with your wakanda forever thoughts i have a great deal of them (laughs) that is such a in fact i need to watch it again you mentioned that it's actually out now on i think disney plus it is yep i I I do want to watch it again yep absolutely but it's kind of it was kind of a mixed bag for me overall which is kind of a heartbreaker because i know Oh my gosh, a Bozeman, you know, that like it hangs over the movie kind of like a like a like a cloud. And that that can be good or bad. I've certainly seen movies where <laughs> why am I thinking of Fast and Furious I think seven, right? At the top of my list for some is reason. The, that, is that the end with it with him in the uh Yeah. Like the... <laughs> it's bizarre that it's it's coming to mind, but I th- I think it's a, a high water <laughs> mark. No, this is not working. Well, Fast X is coming out, and they pl- there's a whole bunch of Paul Walker in was... that. So, oh what they what? in the in the trailer there was a there was a lot of them referring. I'm I'm assuming it's old footage, oh, but not like, like actual him or old a okay. guy. I mean, oh, I hope it's not actual him. <laughs> He's all it's the trailer I could actually watch and not worry about the movie getting spoiled because when has the movie changed? But I'll tell you when it changed. Six, five or six ish maybe was when it made the lead. Fast and Furious as a franchise is always. So, uh, Wakanda Forever yeah. is is smooth, smooth transition. It's good. Yeah, that was great. Is is a good movie. It's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. And I'll tell you what, darn near ninety five percent of the Namor stuff is or Namor Namor is great. Is is just really amazing. I love what they did with every little bit of it. The thing that that's kind of making me hesitate is, is really nitpicky garbage where. 
some of the underwater stuff and some of the way they moved underwater, I was like, I feel like people born and raised underwater would move a little differently than I would when I'm like trying to force myself to stay under the water in, in the pool. You know, like there, I, there was, some, I was just, there was a little bit more otherworldliness to it or something. So this was, it was a moment where, where Beth actually went, I, I, I like Namor, but I think Aquaman's world looked better. You know, for some reason, I haven't made that comparison actually. The, the, the way the, the way the Atlanteans move, in and, and everything the way they did the water for aquaman beth was like i like that a lot better and i agree i, I mean, actually did agree i like the way they did the water better yeah i might because i don't remember having issues with with aquaman stuff but also aquaman like i mean different speaking it's, of different it's, it's so different, different yeah because they're, but, they're but, obviously but, very but they but the the comparisons that you can make they are sure. born underwater they live underwater uh the way they move and stuff it's just it, it, it's you know it's a different flavor I just happen to also agree that I like the way they move underwater yeah. in Aquaman more. Yeah. And it's just, again, also very nitpicky, like overall just outstanding. I really like the Namor stuff and on the Tom yeah. Con and all that. Just really, really cool. Uh, I think the movie itself it kind of unravels. It feels like it unravels a little bit as it goes. You know, it, it starts out better than it ends. You know, it's, <laughs> that's definitely got, true. Got maybe a messy, third act period but it's not messy in the way that you know it, it blows up or it becomes a, a fate of the world type thing so yeah, yeah. I, i'll give it credit for that you know marvel has made that mistake before you know but it's it does like like construction wise probably writing wise it doesn't come together as much as i would like towards the end upon first viewing i do want to watch it again i need to watch it again i, I have a lot of the same feelings i i think that the fact that we that this is what we got, you know, considering they they if I remember correctly, the script was basically written when Chadwick died. Like they had it done, so they had to rewrite the whole thing. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Uh so so considering that, I mean, it's a miracle that we got what we got. Uh I I, I will say Angela Bassett, like th th Oh man. Okay, yeah. Here here's probably should have led with that. This is this is what this is you could say this is bold you could say whatever this is a movie where she should be nominated for an academy award it's kind of like in my notes i'm like this is her movie but it's not and she's not in it that much but it's her movie it's and, yeah she, and she's she is amazing. Yeah. remarkable in it and yeah. that speech she gives the actually the multiple speeches she gives that is a woman who i, I don't know if she lost somebody in her life and she channeled that but boy oh boy she was amazing I, I, I'm not yep. going to say anything real negative about Shuri other than I wish they had gone a different direction. Um, but she was good in the role. I'll give her, I absolutely, yep. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I have to believe there was that the, that stinger at the end is not what, what originally was there. I just don't think it was. I, I think they had to do that for some reason it didn't land either man like I, th th that's part it's kind of the whole, overall this whole thing is like yeah bozeman and all this and it should have been a tribute and all this and and i want it to be and yes r.i.p and oh my gosh she was great and then it's not like well that, and it's that, like you know and that's the thing know. is it starts off so strong like they're like let's address it immediately address it we're gonna get it out in front of it he's sick he died credits let's go wakanda forever now that was great i was okay yeah. you got yep. ahead of it I want to see the world without the black. I want to see a world without the black Panther. It's interesting. What is Wakanda without the black Panther? And there is some stuff, but they like, try to do it. Cause yeah, she's reluctant to pick up the mantle at first, but I know. hate, I, I, I don't hate it, but I, I, that's the wrong word, but I really would have preferred more of those, uh, those moments that we had, like in the first movie where you had those council scenes where there were multiple council scenes and they're arguing and they're talking about the politics behind it and instead of it turning into this well now we've got to go talk to uh we've got to go we have to bring in martin freeman again so that we can get iron heart involved because we can't talk to anybody else about anything because she's kind of like the the, yeah. the one of my one of my biggest complaints this is a complaint i think people have about movies all the time and and it's it's this is a movie that i think is very much so kind of uh it, it plays off of like they, it totally is predicated off of nobody talking to each other and just talking. 
yeah, the whole what thing was with, this... with Atlanta yeah. with, or with the Talokan and, and, and Wakanda, just a discussion. Oh, okay. But no, it's immediately like, and it's, and it's the Wakandans that come out and they're like immediately like forceful. Whereas he's just talking. Let's talk. No, we're not going to do that. Then there's the stuff like there's every part of this movie is like, all they needed to do was have a conversation. And I see what you're saying now. Okay. Like and yeah. every res and hmm. everything that goes on here is resolved. I guess I didn't have, there are certainly movies that do it better. The whole escalation aspect to it, you know, like, like multiple mistakes upon mistakes, like kind of a happenstance of it all. That Die hard leads to something. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I, and I, I see their go at it. And actually I don't think overall I had the same issue. Like I, I never thought that maybe, I mean, yes, obviously a, a conversation, would have helped without the egos involved, but I guess I I bought I bought Namor so much that I wasn't like I thought he was portrayed in kind of the perfect sense. Like you, yeah, you always know, you know, that's been his thing in the comics. Even I know that, even though I don't I haven't read a lot of him, that that he's very standoffish to to put it mildly. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought they did a good job of of skirting that line and and making yep. that kind of the main reason with some mistakes by Shuri, uh, even though I, I get where it doesn't mesh. I guess I, I guess I didn't think that there was any point where a conversation could have solved it because it was these this, this clash happening. Well, that, I that... mean, the whole thing begins because the Wakandans don't want to believe that there could be vibranium beyond their shores. That's the whole argument. And then there's a ship down there. Like, all they have to do is go, oh, there is more vibranium down there. Oh, and you guys use vibranium. Okay. Let's have let's talk. Instead, it's well. Blah, blah, blah. They they just get into a fight about it immediately. Well, that's why I'm saying I think Namor has done done right because he he's the one that comes up and is like, listen, you tried to re or not re-enter, but you tried to enter the world stage with this vibranium, and right. now it's all anybody else wants. And now that they've found it at the doors of my kingdom, he's like, I want you to to pay for this and help me get rid of them. This is your fault. And I agree. And I I, I agree with you. Like I think Namor and the Talokan, like the the way that was all portrayed and will continue to be portrayed. I think that's awesome. Like they should be very much so anti, like they're not, they're, <laughs> they're heroes unto themselves because, you know, they are uh, an evolution of, of, a you know, human humanity or whatever. Mutants. They use the M word, man. They're mutants. Yeah. So like, but, but they are very much so the like, yeah, leave our place alone. We have no interest in you. We don't have any interest in the surface world. If you come down here, we're going to have interest in the surface world. And you really don't want that. I have wings on my feet. <laughs> yeah, I do. But I love that they stuck with that, right? Like that, that would have been the first thing to go in a lot of different interpretations, it right? Takes, it takes, it's a huge part of who he is though. His being able yep. to essentially float among It does men. explain flying, yeah, a little bit more than just... Yeah. How, how would they have explained it otherwise, actually? He uh, uses the water that's in the air to levitate himself because he's lighter than... I don't know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited to watch it again. I, I always like movies upon second viewing, but I, I, those were my issues, certainly, the first time around. So yeah. Glad, glad I, to know I'm not... I, I would assume I'm not alone because honestly, I haven't heard a ton about the movie outside. No, I, I of, just, I, I think yeah. that, you know, I, I, and I, I want to talk, I, the, the last thing I want to mention about it is I think that Nakia got the short end of the stick. I, I, a little forced. I don't yeah. know that she should have been the Black Panther. I get that they're sticking with the whole. Um, oh, is that? Oh, I yeah. get, I get that they're sticking with the, the comic continuity of Shuri being Black Panther, but I think Nakia does at one point also become, I, in any case, the the fact that she is relegated to, well, she's going to fight a little bit, and she's now mom to Black Panther 3, or whatever, like, I'm not yeah. into that even a little nope. bit. Kind of, kind of dumb. Didn't didn't land for yeah. me either. But that, I, I don't want to even... I don't want to end on that again. The, no, I've got a great. The, ending the best for I can say about that movie is the no more stuff, and oh, that after viewing that, the MCU feels rejuvenated in a way. Like there is some newness to the MCU that I think I was wanting and didn't know I wanted. It, it, like the the world is opening up in 
even even in the quantum realm, you know, and I haven't seen. We might go see that very very soon. Oh, I want to go uh, see Quantum Mania is oh. out. Uh, but the Namor stuff, like the Talokan stuff, opened up the universe more than yeah. the quantum stuff did for me. You know, like I'm sure. excited about what what's next. So yeah, no, it's it's a uh, the Namor the, the Namor launching. stuff was amazing. That was I love that 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 de- the, that uh, decision to go down the Mesoamerican route. For their it's cool. Yeah, I was. Fin- I had no idea that was what they were doing. Too. Amazing. Loved that. The costuming, the look, all of it was super great. Have they done that in the comics? I don't think all? so. I think he. Okay. I think they're Atlantean in, in the comics. They're just okay. like, just like Aquaman. It's they're just Atlanteans. It's just it's so well done. You almost gotta wonder because even the whole scene on Muller thing, like, like. S- <laughs> how did that work out it's just perfect <laughs> right like somebody was like dude we can make it no lo- oh, no use we got it we got it he's spanish let's do it so yeah well i guess we'll come we'll come back to that <laughs> probably <laughs> also in 2023 all right i got one more for you and then i okay i'm i'm done go, go. okay all right forever Spence. and uh, no i mean uh, you can do one more but i've got i've only got one more oh I mean. well i guess we'll see okay uh the best movie i saw all last year i ended hmm. up seeing at the beginning of this year and <laughs> and i uh i am man this director dude martin mcdonough the guy does not miss he just hits everything he's 100 for 100 or whatever and the banshees of inishirin ah that movie yes. is one of the most wonderful beautiful awful painful heartbreaking phenomenal movies i've ever seen and give colin farrell his friggin oscar man that that performance is nobody came close there is nothing like that is an unbelievable role that he has and the way he and gleason play off each other throughout it and the 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 pain and the the frustration and how all of that oh my god it's just powerful stuff amazing funny uh souring like heartbreaking all of it it's everything and it's so freaking good and it's i i just cannot recommend it enough i i just can't it's the simplest story in the world and it's something that that anybody can easily connect to and uh and the way he puts it out there like oh man Farrell's been great in lots of stuff. I like the guy. No, no, no. Really? No question. But <laughs> this is like, fan, but okay. Yeah. This is, this is next level stuff for him in my, this is, is like, he... this is the, you know how Keaton deserved an Oscar for Birdman? This is Birdman hmm. for Colin Farrell. Huh? Uh, is he the, the main? Yeah. Like, is it, it's, it's, he it's, has it's, more screen time than Gleason? Yeah. It's well, I mean, it's, it's the two of them for the most part. Yeah. And then, um, but you would say it's more his story than no, it's his movie. Gleason's maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't uh, shoot uh, McDonough. You you said he was uh, it had a good run. I didn't know it was the same dude that did Three Billboards. Three Billboards. And I have never seen. I believe you have Seven Psychopaths. I. It's Christopher Walken's greatest film. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I, I think I remember you talking about. It, it has actually. Tom Waits. As a serial killer carrying around okay. a bunny. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, Seven Psychopaths is 200% worth your time. All right. Yeah. He's uh, he's doing pretty good. Have you ever seen his short six shooter? I've First not. thing he did, apparently, 2004. All right. Well, who's to say then, really? Oh, Brendan Gleeson is in that, too. Mm. Hmm. Well, I mean, uh, Colin Farrell is the main in uh, Seven Psychopaths, so... All right, and, and then Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson were also the mains in in Bruges, which in was Bruges, yeah, movie, I guess so. the one I wasn't talking about because I thought obviously, but and I have seen in Bruges. It's been a if you like long time. It, it, are they actually related? I know it's no, like a spiritual. No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay, this is this is totally separate in every respect. It has nothing to do with that. There, this the movie takes place in like 17th century Ireland or 18th century Ireland or something. You know, okay. it's it's I about mean, yeah, hearing you talk about it that i mean in bruges isn't necessarily it's actually not that I far mean, back, it, but it's like 1900 it's good <laughs> but it's 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 uh it's not it doesn't sound feel like it's dealing with as much of the the deeper issues that you're hinting no at for... th- this right here is is very much so like 
it deals with a lot of things, but one of the things it, it it's its focus is is just how people change. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you did anything. I just changed. We're just different now. Something happened. I don't know why. I can't explain it. It just is. Like life occurs. And this movie is about two people that were best of friends that now are not because one of them just doesn't want to be anymore. <laughs> and it's crushing to the other one. And he wants to know <laughs> why, like he wants his friend, he misses his friend. And so it's funny, but it's heartbreaking in how it plays out and it's heartbreaking in the story behind it and what goes on. And then you've got this other bit, like, cause it, 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 it the, the best part about this movie is that it takes place on a tiny Island called Inishirin that ha oh, that right. that has yes on a tiny ireland uh <laughs> that that there's like i don't know 10 people in the movie at most and and like you see them all throughout but the main two are gleason and Farrell, and the the th coming in third is that one guy who uh was the joker in the batman who's welsh or something oh uh barry Kane barry keon keon going to honey barry keon 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 yeah and he's in the movie. Sure. Is he? Uh, is he, is he he's the Joker. Yeah, scars, scars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on his face. Yeah, he, he's. he's like, I, I really, I don't think I should be in this movie either, guys. They, they, they dropped him I off really... from Arkham, 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 Arkham Asylum, and, and he's like, <laughs> "Well, here we are <laughs> once again." Uh, I can't recommend it enough, and that's a movie. Sit down and watch it with with candy. Like, it's oh, sure. Yeah, make her sad. And the great part is for Come all on. the for all the swearing that's in it. Like she won't even pick it up because they're saying feckin', feckin', feckin' <laughs> yeah. all the time. Feckin'. It's what, -E what did he say? Feckin', feckin'. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Farrell has done that on a few talk shows too. He'll just like <laughs> ever so slightly change the vowel and the F word. And and, and I remember a Conan episode where they're like, do we have to believe, is there, or should we be believing this right now? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right. It's it's great. Shoot. It's It is true. It's a beautiful movie. Well, if I had to follow that up with anything, you know what it would be? Fast and the Furious 8. <laughs> You're kind of not far off. I've, okay, t t tell me yes or no on this, because I've also, I've considered doing a, a, a BCFM by myself on this one for Deep Impact. <laughs> okay. So many stories, so many great times in my life were had really? seeing that movie in the theater three times. Uh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. I'm glad I mentioned it then. How so? <laughs> this couldn't have come up in a stranger way. We kept seeing clips of it in like uh, movie games we were playing. Like we played, seen it a few times. And <laughs> they're they like, keep... "Wait, are you serious? Or are you... did I fall for it?" No, I'm dead serious. I saw the movie okay, three so times. Okay, make sure in the you're theater. laughing now. Like he fell. No, for... no, no, no. I was gonna say, I like. I feel like this movie has bunches of clips in random places that are like, "There's Morgan Freeman. There's Elijah yeah. Wood." It's like, what the yep. hell? Hey, Tay Leone. Lily Sobieski. Yeah, uh... Lily Sobieski. <laughs> Which, this is the other thing, I had never seen it before, but I had kept seeing all these clips, so Candy kept asking, like, oh, should we, should we watch that? I'm like, I don't know. Never, never, like, Ridiculous. Uh, all I remember about it is that it came out near Armageddon, uh -huh. and I saw Armageddon. In fact, it came out within two months of Armageddon, by the way. And Deep Impact came out. Two months later, Armageddon came out. And then there was the other one that had Morgan Freeman. No, he was in this. No. He's that is Deep, Deep Impact. Impact. There's yeah. the other one that came out that came right around the same time. There's Armageddon, Deep Impact. Was there a third? Really? And there was another one too. And it might have been the one that's about uh, it might, might have been a core or something like that. Maybe oh, that was core. Yeah, of. sure. That but, was later. That but was there Aaron was Eckert. there was. I feel like there yeah. was another another like massive like a flooding situation movie that that was happening at the same time. Well, let's look up Roland Emmerich here. What was he doing? Because he <laughs> he's probably to blame. Either yeah, <laughs> uh, no. I remember. I remember not seeing it, but thinking, "Oh, that just looks like Armageddon, except like a drama." And not only was I extremely right back in 1996 or whatever it was, correct. But also, how how annoyed were you? I mean, they were being developed in in not in tandem, but at the same time. Uh, uh, what's the chrono? Not chronologically, uh, contemporaneously. So I'm sure they knew. But but how annoyed were the Deep Impact folks when Armageddon came out two months later and was just like, who cares? <laughs> like, like, sure, characters, whatever. What if 
it Who was, cares? Uh, it was it was it was Dante's Peak, which came out the year before both ah. of them. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, yeah, sure. In uh, in a uh, um, Pierce, Pierce Brosnan's Brosnan. GQ thing, he talks about Dante's Peak actually fondly. It's funny, which I have I haven't seen that movie either. Actually. Also fun. All right, fun. I won't talk about. It. I, I assume we'll do a show on that one at the very least. Well, I mean, it's it's you know who you know who the other lead <laughs> is, right? It's it's oh. it's it's uh, Pierce Brosnan I had to and guess, Laura Linney, Linda Hamilton. So you were close. Oh, 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 oh wow! Yeah. I was both way off and kind of close. No, it's yeah, a good I mean. one. It's actually super fun. <laughs> wow! Is that is that like the only other movie she did after Terminator? That uh, is, I shouldn't have said that. I regret it immediately. <laughs> She's done a lot of stuff. Wonderful actor. <laughs> she, she, from Beauty and the Beast to the Terminator, that's all. Oh, and then boy. Dante's Peak. <laughs> I did remember that, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, Deep Impact. Yes, it, it's not Armageddon, thankfully, obviously also, which I probably liked when it came out, but I, I don't look back on. I have not rewatched. In fact, I, me and my wife have this this funny thing where she's like, should we watch this Michael Bay movie? And I'm like, no. Because she's it's like, not For the, the longest rock. time, I didn't allow my daughter to watch Pearl Harbor. I'm like, no, she cannot, like... It's, I will tell her about movie. Pearl Harbor. Yeah. It, well, also, yes, I also think they're bad movies, but also I don't want her thinking any of it's true in no, the least show, bit. You know, like show her The Rock and tell her that's true. Yes, and that is the one I will. But I'm in, currently in the process of editing all the swear words. So, uh, Deep Impact is actually pretty good. It's, it's not bad. Super fun, man. And again, I would say it's another example of a movie that maybe. It's probably not a B movie in any sense of the word. But oh, I I would say it's a B movie with a. Oh, really? Okay. With, I would say it's a B movie with a movie like like a triple A film, whatever you want to call it. Budget. I'd say it's not a blockbuster. I don't think it was ever pushed but it, as a blockbuster. But it has sorts, that budget. But, <laughs> uh, but also, you, you I watch it now and I'm like, man, they just like the the bad movies nowadays. They just don't make like the bad movies back then. And it, this isn't a bad movie. That's a stupid way to say that. But people know what I'm. It's talking a B about. movie. Yeah. Uh, maybe the funniest stuff in that movie. How long has it been since you rewatched it? Oh, dude, it's been forever. I haven't seen it probably okay. since the it, theaters, actually. Post-COVID, it's downright hilarious. right? They, um, <laughs> Morgan Freeman, who plays the president, gets up, and when he first announces the uh, uh, comet, uh, he basically says, there will be no profiteering. I've frozen all wages and prices. And the end. <laughs> <laughs> and everything's fine. I'm like, oh, that did it, did it. That's a, that's all you <laughs> gotta do. Declare it. Okay. Oh, and he's like, there will be no hoarding. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's just so like this. This movie does not, cannot exist anymore after yeah. COVID. It Amer- just can't. Americans will listen to you and stay yeah, calm. Not only will they listen, it, it's not the first thing they'll do. Certainly, I have, <laughs> I have so many. They weird... don't still have toilet paper. Not I, at all. I have so many weird <laughs> memories and vague, and they're so vague about that movie. I remember the thing that stands out to me right now, though. Is, it's the, probably the part that I remember the most. I have no idea if it's the beginning, middle, or the end. It, but there, I feel like Elijah Wood is it, with his family in their car, and they're stuck on a highway, and he's like. They're, mm-hmm. they're. I don't know what they're doing. They're, they're getting ready to die. I feel like it's the end of the so movie. So I be- believe he has married Lily Sobieski. They are both kids, but That's to right. get her on the Ark, which is a series of caves that have been built. Oh, I forget now where Montana, maybe. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. about the caves. Yeah, it's all. It's like how how calm and just thought out all the presidency is and how, and how well i mean yes towards the end of the movie it's there's a little bit of apocalypse going on but it's still very muted <laughs> in comparison to covid what <laughs> what has actually happened now uh, but he's he's ditched the ark to go get lily back and he he rescues her from uh, her family that is stuck on the highway i believe ah, okay. and is still on the highway when the tidal wave hits if I remember correctly, yeah, th- everybody watched did. it yesterday, <laughs> and I tried not to remember it between now and then. So I don't know if that answers your question, but it does. It's great. Everybody dies. That is uh, slightly. I mean, Robert Duvall. Yeah, Robert Duvall. Two Robert Duvall movies in in one session. Uh, uh, does a... gets it done. He's the the older astronaut that that saves the world. Uh, you know, the thing is, Robert Duvall gets it done. All the time. I mean, you, you yeah. want a, you want a solid actor? You throw Robert Duvall in there. You want you want another solid actor that uh, you can't get Robert Duvall? You call Robert Loja, okay? That's Robert Loja. Yeah. Is he? I believe he is not. I I I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say I love their films. 
<laughs> but if you ever want to watch a weird movie, uh, there is a film that came out in the I uh, probably uh, mid nineties. I'm guessing ninety four called Opportunity Knocks. Uh, oh, why do I know that? It stars Dana Carvey. <laughs> oh, that's well, that's, it, that's why I it know was it. the only Dana Carvey movie I think that was good. Uh, that oh, was, what a Master of Disguise just under the bus immediately. There we go. I was gonna say <laughs> I think that movie is stupid and bad. <laughs> but opportunity knocks i do remember thinking that movie was so freaking funny and robert wow. Loja is in it, and it's such a bizarre movie where he's essentially like a uh, a con artist and it's funny it's good wow i i do i recognize this but yeah i have no that is amazing 1990 this reminds me of uh um this in fact here we go movie olympics this little taste uh pure luck Yes, with Martin Short and Martin uh, Short, and, yep. <laughs> uh, uh, and Danny Glover. Oh, there right. was a bit. So, there was a bit in that movie that used to crack me up too, and I don't remember what it was. But oh, it was, I loved it. I don't remember a thing about it, yeah. but I absolutely have yeah, one of my favorite movies. So. Which and I remember. I all I remember I was is there was something in that movie that made me laugh so hard, and it. I think it was a sound that he makes. Like he does something, and it ma- he makes a weird sound. And there was a movie called Second Sight. With John Larroquette and Bronson Pinchot. Bronson Pinchot has super long hair is in a sight and is a psychic uh, that helps them. I remember this too. It's an insane <laughs> movie. It's insane. But there's a moment where like he starts transmitting radio oh waves or gosh. something, and he opens his mouth and he has this weird like sound that comes out, and I just died laughing that automatically sounds like pincho yeah it's a bronson situation see this is what it's all about because now i feel like we're we're inevitably ho- heading towards the uh, king of all of these movies vice versa <laughs> the amazing vice versa fred savage uh the d- always delightful judge reinhold mm-hmm. with a cameo appearance by quiet riot <laughs> Out of nowhere, like doing come on, feel the noise, if I remember correctly. <laughs> oh, jeez. I got to watch all of these now. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but but if you're gonna if you're gonna watch vice versa though, you have to watch the other one that came out at the same time with oh, Kirk oh. Cameron and Dudley Moore. Uh, that was called. Oh man, what was it called? I'm dying. Yes, it's a. Uh... It Kirk Cameron Dudley Moore in. It was another. It was a place changer, wasn't it? Another... It was, yeah, they, because they're father and son, and they they switch they switch places. Trading trading places. No, that's a... it was, no, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> very close, very close. Arthur two on the rocks on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, f- oh I, I, we cannot end without this. Will be the the finale. Uh, going through Dudley Moore's movie career is not easy. I want to shout these called? all out. I've gone too far. How this was, was obviously called? in the 90s. How? Like father. Like son. Like son. That's it. <laughs> what an absolute travesty of a film that was. Also, oh. that was one of those movies. Saw all like I was so into them. They were just my era. Like and then. Oh, yeah. And, and, Oscar winning. And let's not forget that with uh, whenever I would watch, of course, um, vice versa, I would also then want to watch uh, Little Monsters. Did we? Is that the one we watched? I don't no. know. I don't no, 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 no. That's the Fred Savage one. Yeah, Fred. It's Fred yeah, Savage yeah. and uh, and. I'm thinking of Monster Squad. What's Monster his name? Squad? Yeah, Fred Savage and what's his name that doesn't like to touch people on the? He's like German. Howie, Howie, Howie Mandel. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well, now see, I feel like we brought it back down but fred yeah, savage depending you're right yes okay fair I enough mean, so there you go that little uh that that was a movie olympics that's what that was right there i think we can make it work for a full hour uh if you think we can pretty make sure we work just did hour, <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on uh, like we said facebook and twitter but also podcast at book for movies.com also we didn't mention patreon up front we do have a patreon and we people have joined it you can too. You can be part of the club and we can talk to you. You'll receive immediate access to us at any point. You can send us Discord messages that go straight to our phones no matter where we're at or if we want to respond to them. Uh, but we will. 
That's the the guarantee we give. It's so. the threat and promise that we will send your way each and every week as long mm-hmm. as we are making things on the week that we are doing it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So and... come back next week where we might also make a thing. What are we doing Friday right now? Yeah, this show might go out this actual same week, which would be tomorrow. So if you're listening to this tomorrow, it's today. And we appreciate you. And hey, never forget, no matter where you go, there you are. Bye!